Can the LEGO Technic Audi RS Q e-tron go off-roading? Let's find out. I'm on Brickme and this car has astonished me in many ways. In order to find out exactly what mechanisms it has inside, we will have to start the building process with the box, which contains 914 pieces. The set will retail for $180 and it will release on August 1st everywhere in the world. We get three numbered bags, four of these brand new tires, three Control Plus large motors, which are slightly different from older versions since they have the CE logo. And we also have a white box which contains the hub. Unfortunately, it uses four screws unlike the previous snap-on version. The set also includes two 3x19 frames as well as four of these brand new wheel hubs. Do not get confused. These are not recolored planetary wheel hubs. Despite getting power from the same motor, the planetary hub is a lot slower. These brand new smaller curved gear racks are revolutionary pieces. I can see a lot of incredible creations made using them. Here's the complete parts list for this set. The building process starts by stacking two large motors together. Some pins, axles and a beam connect to them. The structure is reinforced with two 16-tooth gears as well as another lift arm. These stacked frames simply expand the chassis outward. The top motor will be driving a 12-tooth gear which moves the gear rack. The driving motor connects to a specialized yellow bevel gear which moves the newer style heavy duty differential. Some small lift arms prevent the gear rack from moving around. Structurally reinforce this part with some beams and then we can build out the attachments for the wheel hubs. Connect the black lift arms to the motors and this triangular structure is called a truss. Now's the time to finally attach the wheel hubs. Make sure to connect them to the gear rack with Technic linkers. After you add some shock absorbers, secure the top with a small structure. Now insert another gear rack here. This type of steering is obviously well reinforced and will not break during play. The shock absorbers are secured with some beams. It is time to begin work on the second stage, which starts with another differential, but this one is inside of a red frame. Build it out with some flip-flop beams and then attach the wheel hub connectors. Now you can attach the wheel hubs onto the structure. Reinforce them with several lift arms. The I-shaped lift arm goes on top and a red gear is secured onto it. Build up the motor and connect it on top of the differential. You can connect it to the differential by using a 16-tooth gear. Attach some shock absorbers and connect them to the vertical flip-flop beams. After everything is reinforced with even more lift arms, use the following 3x19 frames to extend the chassis. Place the Control Plus hub in the middle. A marriage process occurs between the two parts of the chassis. Complete it with another frame on this side. Connect the motors to their respective ports. Reinforce the bottom with some beams and then attach the four wheels to the hubs. This is the second stage and the third one begins with a roof. The other side is secured and another beam with a panel are added. This panel section with a gorgeous Audi sticker connects to the top and rear. Reinforce the sides with some beams. Take these panels with the e-tron stickers and connect them to the sides. The following tapered panels with awesome stickers connect to the front. Reinforce them with an axle and some extenders. Connect some beams on both sides of the car in the place of where the doors are supposed to be. Now connect those brand new curved gear racks on both both sides. On the roof, add some small panels. After you build the rear bumper, simply connect it on the back of the car. These side covers, comprised of a ton of various different panels, attach onto the car. Now build up the front bumper. Take some of these tapered panels and connect them on top of the hood. A curved panel with a sticker for the headlights attaches to the front. Now we can finally take a look at all of the functions of this set. My review of the LEGO Technic Lamborghini Huracan Technica will be coming tomorrow, so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be the first to see a review of that set. But no pressure. No pressure. Surprisingly, this set is actually a pretty good off-roader. It can go over some small rocks and rough terrain. One of the reasons why it's so good for off-roading is because of its incredible fully independent suspension on all four wheels. The rear pair of wheels gets reduced travel as opposed to the front ones. But what's so special about the suspension? Well, it's quite soft and it's incredibly bouncy. Normally, suspension on Technic sets is a lot more stiff. The car uses a total of three motors. One for the rear pair of wheels, the second one is for the front pair of wheels, and the third one is for the steering. So this car is actually a 4x4, which is awesome. However, the ground clearance is quite low, and as a result, the model ends up getting stuck pretty often. Also, the Control Plus hub sits pretty low to the ground. As a result, I do not recommend taking it off-roading in rivers like I did, since it might break your hub. After years of having to make my own custom powered-up controls, 
I was finally given access to the beta version of the Control Plus app. The app itself is quite nice, the throttle graph is certainly interesting, the speedometer is fake unfortunately, it obviously cannot go 170 km per hour. However, it is great that we do get angle measurements of the pitch and roll of this car. Interestingly, the car will actually just coast along if you simply release the throttle, and the wheels will gently come to a stop. If you want to stop the car immediately, you absolutely have to use the brake. You can press the brake at the same time as the throttle, which will just stop the wheels. You also get various stats like the distance you've driven, drive time, pitch record, roll record, energy changed, energy consumed, and the amount of rallies you've driven. Obviously, I did not drive that many kilometers with this car, so that statistic is fake. Given that, the energy stats are probably fake as well. Something very funny you can do is enter rally mode. You need an open area to play this game. Essentially, you have to drive the car in a certain direction before the timer, or rather, your energy runs out. It's a great experience. This is easily the single greatest Control Plus car only after the Mercedes-Benz Zetros trial truck. Since this is still a beta version of the Control Plus app, I will ask for one change that LEGO should make before the final release of this app. Please Please make the throttle and steering controls swappable. Normally, for right-handed users, the throttle is always on the left while the steering is on your right. Your dominant hand is a lot better at precise controls, which is why the steering should be at the right. Mode 2 of controllers is the standard one, which has the steering on the right, and all of the controllers of the previous power function system had the steering on the right. One of my favorite aspects of this car is the front hood. I love how these tapered panels overlap. It results in an absolutely gorgeous aesthetic. The car looks phenomenal from all sides, and is certainly much better in person than what we saw in the official images. I personally had so much fun both building the set as well as actually playing with it using the Control Plus app. The paneling on this set is absolutely spectacular. This set is the perfect combination of functionality and aesthetics. It truly has everything, authenticity, functionality, and challenging building. At first, you might look at the piece count of 914 and think that $180 is overpriced. However, when you consider that this set comes with three large motors, the value instantly shows. The electronics alone would cost you $210, so you're getting all of the electronics at a $30 discount in addition to the heavy duty differentials, tires, the wheel hubs, and much more. The set is actually much bigger than what you typically get with around 900 pieces. Anytime I motorize a Technic set, I typically like to use one Control Plus hub as well as three motors, one for steering and two for driving. This set is a great parts pack for an easy motorization mod of any Technic set. Will you be getting the LEGO Technic Audi RS Q e-tron 4160? Please let me know in the comments. This is your Unbrick Me here and I'll see you in the next one.